Let's simplify number two, cotan x over cosecant x cos x. So again, I look to write any of these as a fraction or change them up. So cotan can be written as cos x over sine x. It could be written as one over 10, but we don't have 10 anywhere else. So it's often simpler to go from to cos x over sine x. Cosecant x is one over sine x. Cos x doesn't change. So from here, we can multiply these and, and write them as a single fraction now. So my numerator stayed the same, but now my denominator is going to be cos x sine x. Now I've got two fractions that I can divide. So when we're dividing fractions, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. And when we do that, the cos x's cancel, so do the sine x's. So this simplifies down to one. Let's look at the NPV. So individually, cotan x. Cotan x is equal to cos x over sine x, which means sine x cannot equal zero. So when we look at our circle, that occurs at zero pi, two pi, three pi, etc. So we say x cannot equal pi n, where n is the element of integers. Let's look at cosecant x. Cosecant x is equal to one over sine x. We have the same scenario where sine x cannot equal zero. So once again, those are your NPVs. Now we need to look at the fact that this is a fraction and that no denominator can equal zero. So that means we'll look at these two. So that would mean cos x cannot equal zero, which we've already kind of looked at here with sine x. And so there's not really further NPVs, but we do have the NPV of cos x cannot equal zero. And so when we look and consider that, cos x cannot equal zero is going to occur pi by two, three pi by two, et cetera. So we have that scenario. So putting this all together, it ends up being on those four, um, every 90 degree or every pi by two. So that would mean x cannot equal pi by two, n, where n is the element of integers.